So, Mini-LED is a new type of technology that is coming out on a lot of new devices that have screens right now. For example, the new MacBook Pro 14-inch and 16-inch will actually have Mini-LED display inside it. But, right now, LG have sent me this brand new QNED Mini-LED 8K TV, what you can see right here. It's a 65-inch TV. And I'm going to test it out to see how good Mini LED really is. So that's right guys, I'm really excited about Mini LED technology. And LG have been really kind enough to send me this brand new QNED LED or Mini LED TV, what you can see right here. It's a brand new 2021 model and it's a 65 inch and they even do a 75 inch but it's a little bit too big for me. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll test out a 65 inch TV for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an unboxing in this video and then after that I'm going to connect up a couple of consoles as well. And we're also going to play around with some of the settings that are also available on this TV. So let's get started with the unboxing. So first of all, I brought the heavy TV through and then I started to unclip the safety catches here with some scissors on each side. And then afterwards, I used the same scissors to sort of cut open the box very, very light. You're not going too deep in because you don't want to cut up the TV if it was right underneath it. So I cut the top bit and then after that, I managed to cut off the sides on the left and also on the right hand side as well. And then finally, I could open up the box. However, inside there were lots of bits and pieces, as you can see, like a TV stand that I've got here. Then I realised I would need some assistance from my wife. So I dragged her in to basically pull off the top part of the box to get this lifted up. And then inside that polystyrene bits and pieces, there were some instructions and there was also the remote with the batteries, what looks pretty cool. And then I decided to take all the packaging off the actual TV stand because this is how I'm actually going to mount it onto the TV. So once that was all taken apart, I got the mount and I started to assemble it together. The main base sort of just clicks onto the back base. It was really, really easy. Just a bit of, a bit of pressure and it clicked into place. There are also four screws to put into the bottom of the actual base. What we'll just need a normal screwdriver or electric screwdriver that I have. So I managed to get one of these screws, put it in a little bit with my hand. And then after that, use my electric screwdriver to cheat it a little bit to get it a bit more quickly done. And I put the rest of the screws in and at the same time held down the base nicely and firmly while the screws went in. Next, with all the polystyrene, we put it on the ground and then we actually laid down the main TV onto this polystyrene as kind of like a base to actually put the base on. So we took on the bottom part off here. It was a little bit tricky to pull off, but we slotted it underneath. And then after this, we got to work in getting the base and then actually securing that on. Luckily, it just clicks on. As you can see, it was really, really easy. And then again, you need to have some screws and a screwdriver and just screw in the four different screw holes that you've got here with four different screws that came with the TV's packaging and instructions and everything. Next, I attached the optional kind of cable ties if you want your cables coming straight down the side of the TV. But there is another option where you can actually plug in your cables and then sort of bring them down along to the middle of the actual TV and then sort of hide them in the main base that you have here. And then there's a nice clip what you can just put on, it just slots on. And also once it's on, you can also easily take it off to put more cables in or tidy it up at another time. Next, we lifted up the TV onto the main TV unit that I have pulled up a bit of packaging as well but removed it and then after this the TV was ready to go so next of all I decided to get started with the setup so I decided to do the setup with using just the TV and add my actual app later on. So I accepted all the terms, conditions and everything that you get with the actual TV. And then we were ready to accept everything else of the actual third party bits and pieces. And next of all, I had to put in my address so the TV could work out where I'm living to give me all the channels that are in my area. After this, I had to select if I had the TV wall mounted or on a stand. I have the TV on a stand, so I selected this. Next of all, there were some AI functions. Like, for example, you could hear the sound different and you could see the picture was different. In fact, listen to the sound difference here with the AI sound. Oh. 
After being wowed by this and turning down my volume because it was so loud, it was time to program the TV. So I've got a standard aerial inside the back of my TV, so I was ready to program this in using that function. So I clicked next and then the tuning began. So obviously this took a bit of time to do because here in the UK, tuning in your TV does take some time. You know, we haven't got the fastest technology in the world. So I left this run for a while and luckily and hopefully it found most of the channels that we get here in the UK. To begin with it didn't find anything at all but as you can see as it got faster along more and more channels got discovered. So far it had been really easy to set up this TV but next of all what I had to do was pair my LG app with this TV. I have another LG device in the house right now what is actually an LG washing machine so I do actually have the app but the app is really easy to download and once you've got it downloaded what you have to do is just open it up and then after this all you have to do is just press the actual plus button that you see on the screen here and if there is a nearby device it will find it automatically and you just have to select it, pair it with a code, what is really, really simple. You've got to put the codes, what you see on the TV. And then after this, the pairing will begin. There's a few more terms and conditions just to accept on the app. And then voila, your phone is now paired with the TV. And it even says in the background there, first use is completed. Next, there's an option to put some preloaded apps on, but after this, you just have to press done and setup is complete. So next of all, let's talk about some of the key features of this TV. So as mentioned, it is a mini LED backlit TV with quantum dot nano cell color technology that delivers an all new TV experience with enhanced brightness, deeper blacks and brilliant colors as you can see here. If you don't know what quantum dot and nano cell technology is, in short, both combined improves color reproduction to create richer and more accurate colors. Not only this, the TV has something else called a full array dimming pro. What basically means each pixel individually can be adjusted in brightness for each frame the TV is displaying. This makes deeper blacks and colors more vivid for a more detailed picture, even in the darker scenes and overall gives a kind of an OLED feel. This TV also is an 8K panel and it can automatically adjust from 8K 60Hz to 4K 120Hz for example for consoles that run at 120Hz so e.g. 120 frames per second what is truly amazing. Not only this, this TV also has an Alpha's 9 Gen AI processor for scaling up to 8K. So again in short any definition of a show or device that is outputting at 420p, 720p, 1080p or even 4K will be scaled up to 8K using the smart AI processor. This TV also includes Dolby Vision IQ that intelligently adjusts picture settings based on the director's intent of how the picture should look and adjust by itself based on room's ambient light levels. Also, like many new TVs, it also has Dolby Atmos and that delivers multi-dimension surround sound so you can even plug in your soundbar via Bluetooth or via HDMI arc if you want to and also get this same effect. Something else what absolutely fascinates me has got to be how thin this TV is. If you look at my finger here next to it, look how thin it really is and we're getting such an amazing picture. So let's move to the back of the TV now and let's see what ports are available. So on the right side we have a common interface card slot, we also have a USB port and also two HDMI ports as well that support an 8K input at 60Hz or a 4K input with 120Hz. On the bottom we have two further USB 3.0 ports, two more HDMI ports as well, again both of them being an 8K 60Hz or 4K 120Hz and and then next to that we have a 1GB LAN port, then an optical out port for sound and an antenna and cable import and also a satellite port and followed by an IR blaster for infrared remotes. 
back on the TV though, in settings, there's loads of different options that you can fiddle around with with your remote. Also, the remote is an air remote, as you can see here. So you can change your picture around if you wanted to, to different kind of modes. I like it really on the kind of standard mode, but depending on what you want to watch, you can change it around. Again, with your sound, you can change it around any way you want it. So depending if you're watching something like a movie or if you're watching sports or anything like this, you can flick it around to any setting you want. You can also change the speaker's output. So if you do have something like a Bluetooth um, soundbar or you have an optical soundbar, you can flick around with this. There is even a feature what's called the Game Optimizer, where you can enhance your game picture with just using this quick setting here. And this feature gives you the best gaming experience with even the ability to optimize the picture by genre. Next of all, there is a sleep timer. So for example, if you leave your TV on and you want to switch off after a certain amount of minutes or even hours if you want to, you can set this up on the TV. The TV also has a wireless AC connection. And then all settings allows you to fiddle around even more. So once this is loaded up, what you can do is you can change around with your picture abilities if you want to do that. Like, for example, fiddling around with the brightness or fiddling around with like the contrast on your screen. You can do this all inside this setting here. You can also do many other different enhancements with the sound as well. Then in the general settings, you can play around with the AI service and loads of other different bits and pieces. And you can also, if you wanted to, change around with some of the actual system settings as well. For example, one of my favorite has got to be with the safety feature right here. And this, if you've got kids, for example, you can set up a lock, for example, on apps or programs. And in fact, I've done that on the likes of like Disney Plus, Netflix, and so on and so forth for my kids, so they don't mess around. You can also fit around with the support and you can also get your software updates through this and you can also switch this on to be automatic if you want that I've done that right here because I like to get automatic updates but yeah there's lots of different things you can fiddle around with in the settings Next of all, the actual home screen is really nice and easy to use. This is the home screen that you can see right here. It gives you things that are recommended right now. And you can see all my apps at the bottom. I've got some padlocks on, like I just said, with the safety feature and some other things I haven't got the padlock on. But the apps are really easy to navigate around using the remote and you can either use the air mode or you can actually just use and click around. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. You can also change around and change some of the settings for your apps if you wanted to do that. So if I wanted to edit this, I can basically move around my apps if I wanted them in a different position. I can also delete them off this page also at the same time. So it's really easy and convenient to do that. You can also add additional apps if you click on the apps button here and it just loads it and after a few seconds the main menu will appear and then you can choose the different apps that you want from the different kind of featured areas, the entertainment, gaming, news and info, live and education but also at the same time there is an ability to do a search if you really wanted to do that. But returning to the home screen here, if we scroll down, we can actually see all the different devices that are connected to my TV, whether this be mobile or TV inputs, or even the sound, or even my washing machine, as you can see right here, what is running through the actual app, and it will tell me when that will be completed, which is pretty cool to be fair. There is also the ability to see what's on TV right now using the live TV feature here and you've got a TV guide and also kind of highlights or things that are trending in the different types of apps that you might have installed on your actual LG TV. But you can also open up the home dashboard to get a different view of everything if you really want to. And on here you can see all the different HDMI things I've got plugged in. You've also got my washing machine still running there. And we can also see that my Apple TV is on. So in fact, let's going to have a look at that. So Apple TV looks amazing on this device. We have all the different apps that I have installed on my Apple TV. And I can also just show you a quick demo here of the latest um, C trailer, or it could even be the first series trailer. But as you can see here, it runs in the background. It looks absolutely amazing. But let's try actually watching a movie on this actual TV. So if I just go to the movies app here on my Apple TV, and let's just select here the Minion Madness, for example. And if I just play and just resume from where I was watching before, the picture quality looks absolutely incredible. This has been upscaled from 1080p all the way up to 8K. 
and oh my, it looks amazing. So next of all, I have plugged in my Xbox Series X and I'm playing the Xbox Series X enhanced version of Forza Horizon 4. And oh my, everything looks absolutely incredible on this TV. Everything is so vibrant and so bright and it just looks absolutely incredible. This game is like built for this TV. But let's switch over now to the PlayStation 5. And I'm doing some swinging around in Spider-Man Miles Morale. And again, this game looks absolutely incredible on the PS5 on this LG TV. It's just like it's built for it. The next generation consoles are just built for this TV or this TV is built for these games. I also finally tested Animal Crossing on my Nintendo Switch and again everything just looks so vibrant and to be honest this just looks like it's been playing in 4K. This is actually a 1080p footage being pumped into this actual LG TV but you wouldn't be able to tell this. It looks so clear and it looks absolutely amazing the Nintendo Switch on this TV what is incredible. So overall, this TV is absolutely stunning. I absolutely love the mini LED on this QLED TV that LG are making right now. And if, I, if you can save up for it, I would definitely, definitely recommend getting one of them because the screen is absolutely amazing on this. And I'm really excited as well for more devices in the future to have a mini LED just like this 65 inch LG TV that I have right here. In fact, if you want to hear some more information about these LG TVs like this QLED mini LED display, 65 inch TV, do check out the link that I'm displaying right now at the bottom. Also, I'll put that link in my description as well. But guys, it's time to also wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And at the same time as well, if you want to hear the latest technology news, reviews and comparisons, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.